Oops. So good afternoon, Valerie. It's really nice to meet you. I've I've been following your career since um, back in the day, uh, Roadkill Highway 61. Actually, as assistant manager of a video store, uh, we were two blocks from UBC, and um, we actually had to get more copies of the films because the film students were actually renting them so often. <laughs> wow, so that's you, were, you guys, you and and those films were a big hit even back then. So that's great to hear. Thank you. Thanks so much, Anthony. Oh, you're welcome. I'd first like to thank you for for taking time to speak to me today. And of course, to Angie as well for making this happen. Mm -hmm. Cause I kind, of, I kind of think you're a, a Canadian led uh, icon almost like, cause you've been in the industry for so long, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did yeah. you first start get into it? When did you first uh, start? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I started off as a puppeteer when I was 18. Really? Does that count? And then, uh, you know, got it. I got some film work, like small bits, and like Mrs. Soffel playing opposite Diane Keaton, things like that. But I really wanted to do theater, so I went to theater school because I, yeah. And then after that, I just uh, it was back and forth theater and film, uh, and it was just actually it was in between. I, uh, uh, Roadkill and Highway 61 when I wrote the, the story for my first short uh, and then it wasn't after Highway 61 did I start you know working with people and trying to get funding for it um, so it was around 93 94 when I completed my first short film that propelled me forward into making more films as a writer, director, producer. Okay. Um, yeah. And this is all interwoven with, you know, acting and theater and films and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. You're, um, so of course we're so here to talk. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> that's what, if I, that's what you're saying, Anthony. I. <laughs> right. I'm bringing up VHS. So, you know, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we're here to talk about your new film that you've written and directed and you shot in your home country of Malta. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful film in so many different ways. But first off, where did the story originate from? Where did you, is it yeah. uh, something personal that you know of or is it a story? Yeah. It is something personal in that, um, well, back in 2013, I went to visit my family in Malta uh, and um, I, a cousin of mine took me to see my aunt Rita, who was at a home for the elderly. And, you know, I asked him, like, I never really understood what Rita's story was about because she never... She always dressed in black, but she wasn't a nun and she never married. She wasn't quite a widow and and that sort of thing. So he explained to me that back in the day, uh, there was a tradition that when a man became a priest, which was quite often in Malta, like every family had a son who was a priest or something, uh, very uh, Catholic there. And uh, anyways, when a man became a priest, his sister would go with him and be his maid. And she would not get an education, a salary, or have a family of her own. Mm -hmm. And that was our Aunt Rita's thing. So when she was 13, she was sent off to take care of uh, our great uncle, uh, Monsignor. And then uh, she took care of our uncle, the priest. And that was her life. That was her life. And it just like, knock me sideways yeah it is kind of a it is kind of a sad story but but it's such a beautiful film like i know it played at whistler last year and it won for best cinematography which is deservedly so and yeah. hopefully hopefully it'll get more recognition 
now that it's out, you know, available for the general public to see as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, well, you know, sure, it's a cinematographer, but Malta is quite beautiful. <laughs> like, it, you know, when the artists uh, actually go there to paint and make their work, because the light is quite brilliant. When the sun hits the limestone walls, it turns into gold, and then you have the aqua blue sea. Um, and it's so rich with history. So that's all vibrating within the film. Um, so, and because I'm an optimist, I took my aunt's dark story, sad story, I suppose, uh, and put in the what if, what if she, she just kicked herself out of there and, and lived her life, you know? Um, and so that's all make-believe and um, my kind of magical world. Yeah. It works, though, because she went out and bought that red dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she becomes alive, like just sitting on the bench next to the police officer. And he's sound asleep and she's just enjoying the food she's eating and the surroundings watching people go on with their lives and it just I don't know it, it was so rich in so many different capacities that it's hard yeah. to really say what was so profound about the film but it's it's now tied with The Legend of Molly Johnson as my those are my two favorite films of the year is Carmen and I just watched Legend of Molly Johnson last night and it, it's incredible. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. Great. I'll uh, I'll check that one out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that whole thing about if you've been a servant for most of your life, uh, to be able to just sit on a park bench eating a sandwich and enjoying <laughs> your the village, it, it, it must be so satisfying. I, that's what I imagine. And that's where that bit comes from. And it also helps introduce the uh her take on the villagers you know yeah yeah now you got quite a lot of uh you got quite a lot of um funding for this you got telefilm and cbc and you even got malta involved yeah how did all that come up that must have been a lot of work to get to uh, <laughs> Oh, tenacity, tenacity, yeah, I wish. <laughs> tenacity, tenacity, tenacity. Um, so uh, first off, I went on, I wrote the script, and then I went to Coral Aiken, the Canadian producer. She read it. She said yes, and we applied for development funding so I can work on the script further with a script editor, and that's when we brought in Anne-Marie McDonald. And so we did that twice. And then Coral and I uh, flew out to Malta and interviewed many um, producers there. Now, they don't make a lot of their own films there, which is a shame because there's so much talent. But uh, so we found, uh, we met with Pierre Alul and he had quite a bit of experience, especially as a service producer which means he, you know, helping big films, American and, um, yeah, you know, German, British, big, big films, where most of the cast that you saw in, my, in Carmen would have been just extra, extras in one of those films, or crew, the crew would be, have smaller roles and those, so forth. So we teamed up with Pierre, and then eventually uh, his life partner and business partner, Annika Pacella Savana, and they were able to uh, bring in some Maltese funding uh, from the Film Commission, Maltese Film Commission, and uh, and there you go. And then you know, Coral and I met up with uh, at that time it was Marinez at the CBC, um, and you just keep plowing. It's you know to take a crew and so forth overseas and then also we weren't in shooting right in 
it was it's part of Malta, but there's a little island, it's Malta and the Maltese Islands, and there's an island called Gozo. So that means we had to put everybody up, even the locals, right? And and all of this stuff, it's just an expensive endeavor. So yeah, yeah, we needed that funding. Um, it's quite amazing how things get expensive. But the, yeah. end, the end result is absolutely beautiful. Like, I love the little, ink, um, just the little touches that you had. Like, um, when she's she's grieving the loss of her brother, she's gone to his funeral, and the two ladies to her left, kind of mocking her because she never talks, right? Yeah. But then she, I won't spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but she then in her own capacity without realizing it, she ends up helping these two exact same ladies. Just yeah. because she's been so giving of herself, she doesn't know anything else but to give of herself. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then it's it's actually after that moment, you know, where she finds her voice, <laughs> I'm trying not to give it away either. <laughs> where she, the moment where she finds her voice, where everything shifts, you know, yeah. everything shifts um, uh, visually and um, yeah. Anyways, I won't say any more, but yes, it's all part of her uh, inner life, her arc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. Do you have anything, I mean, I know this just came out uh, last week, but in theaters um, and eventually in the States sometime next month. Yeah. Is there anything you're currently working on now? Can you discuss it or is there anything you might have coming up? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got quite a few projects in the works. Um, I'm going to be directing a psychological thriller called The Dogs. It's uh, based on a novel by Alan Stratton, and we'll be shooting up north. Uh, that was written by um, Akila Rogerson and Anthony Arbadello, sorry, and it was with Wild, Wild Media Productions. So I'm just prepping for that right now. Nice. And um, I'm also writing a screenplay that I will be directing and co-producing with Coral Aiken, the Canadian producer, called Still Kicking, and it's a jukebox musical comedy. Oh. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun, <laughs> um, pulling out songs and singing along as I write. <laughs> um, so I've got that, and I'm writing a theatre piece with two women in Malta, so we do that through Zoom. They are two women who also acted in Carmen. Actually, the woman that played Giovanna, yeah. her name is Paulina Fennec and uh, Angel Gallia. So it's I'm really excited about that piece. It's about, um, again, the female voice in Malta and the patriarchy and so forth. And yeah, so uh, yeah, quite a, f quite a few projects in the works nice. right now. Yeah. Quite a diverse, yeah. different range of things you're working on too. So. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I'm also making a film with my cell phone. <laughs> with my cell phone. <laughs> with my cell phone. Cool. Just because I keep waiting around. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So there's lots going on. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I sincerely appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to me. It's been a it's been a privilege. Thank you, thank you. And maybe we can talk in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank right you, side. Anthony. Thanks, Angie. Thanks for making this happen. My pleasure. I'm glad you liked it. Oh yeah, she's wonderful. Just as <laughs> wonderful as I I've heard about you. So. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Thank All you. right. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye.